away from HIV, <coughs> featuring Joan at Wembley. Um, we've got another one coming soon. Do you want to call us across those with you? Okay. Um, what's the percentage of that robot that you've seen since the um, that have been joining the forum and the role and the landscape of the forum and what it's got to do? Does it feel like there's a massively more important game than might be in the Facebook page? Yeah, it's uh, firstly a really good test for us. Um, top level opposition. Um, Full house at Wembley, so always we want to play well and, and send them home happy. Um, and of course, in terms of um, the run of results that we've had, we want to leave there with more confidence. If you can get a win against Germany, then um, we'll, we'll leave the week feeling more uh, positive than perhaps everybody is feeling at this moment in time. Is there any room for experimentation for you now, um, or is is on the basis of what you've just said? Does that mean you've got to play your strongest team and desperately go out for a win? I think we've, we've always got to, um, I mean, firstly we've got to make sure two days between matches, so there's, there's physical uh, um, constraints on some things and we've got to um, still look after the players. You know, the two-day two turnarounds are not ideal, really. Um, we, of course, have a squad of players that have a lot of caps between them. Um, so, you know, we've, we've still got to make sure that we're not um, wasting opportunities to have a look at things, but we, we, we are honing in on, uh, on a World Cup and we don't have any more matches after this. So there is, um, there is a greater emphasis on trying to bed things down as much as we can. You're obviously not going to see the players um, after this game until seven days before your first game in, in, in the World Cup. How much do England's prospects between now and then, rely on some of your key players getting more game time for their clubs? Well, <coughs> I, um, I spoke when we named the squad about um, there not being an ideal situation for some of the players at this moment in time. Um, but I think there's so much football for them with their clubs, with European matches, with um, League Cup. Um, that's putting aside the possibility of injuries and changes in form within the clubs. So... Um, I'm, I'm confident our guys will get football um, and um, you know some probably will get more than we'd like in, in an ideal world. So there's a balance to all of that, really. Raheem, can I turn to you if that's OK? Um, look, this, this run that England are on is, is such a contrast from where the squad's been in the last two major tournaments um, and all the success you've had. What, what do you put it down to yourself and is it something the players have discussed? Um, I wouldn't say I can put it down to anything. Um, like, you know... Um, in football, there's there's ups and downs, and I think you know over the last couple of years, you know we've been you know on quite some good form, and it's one of those times that it's not quite going you know how we planned. Um, in a lot of the games, individual performances hasn't been you know up to par, and you know me myself, I I take responsibility for my my performances. But as I said, it's not a time to panic. I think um, the game tomorrow is another opportunity to go out there and you know put a, a great show on for the the fans and um, take a, a step in the right direction and um, you know um, if we get that, that win then we're, we're in good stead. You've had a very close relationship with the man on your right for a long time now since you were very young. Um, what do you make of the criticism that he's facing personally? Yeah I think it's we, we all know that's what comes with football and playing at the highest level you know you're right under the eye and um, I think a lot of it has been un unfair but of course that's the, the the level that we're at with England. We're we're always, um, you know, under that pressure to win. And you know, this small um, loss of form is 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 not, as I keep saying, something that we need to panic about. I think we have a, a big opportunity coming up in in the winter to go out there and show that what we can do again. And um, for what he's done since he's been in here, um, brought us to a semi and a final. Um, it just shows the direction that we're going in. Yes, we're not at the level that we we know we can be, but I still think we, we have positives to look at. Gareth, similar one to you to end, end from me, if that's OK. A lot of the criticism since the Hungary defeat and since the Italy defeat has been directed your way personally. Does that hurt you? Does it cause you to doubt yourself in any way? Uh, look, I'm the manager, and um, the results haven't been at the level that we want and that we, we require. So um, no matter what job you have in football that would be the case of course with the national team that noise is going to be even louder and, um, and more widespread and I totally understand that so 
um, not hiding from that. It's um, it's a situation that we aren't enjoying, not winning football matches. Um, but we have to keep doing the right things every day to keep improving the small bits of our performances that can make the difference. And if we approach every day in that manner and keep the standards high and the performances come, then eventually the results turn. And um, I, I don't think it's ever been any different in football. So you don't doubt yourself, you don't change things, you don't think, OK, I'm a, a bit of introspection here. No, I, look, I'm fortunate that I'm now, um, sadly, in my 50s. Um, I've been in football 30 years. I've got, um, in one guise or other, I've been to 12 tournaments, whether that's working with these chaps or scouting, seven as a, or this will be my seventh as a player or a coach. Um, so I've seen pretty much everything. I've seen the cycle of um, war with the media. I've seen uh, absolute love in. Um, we're somewhere in the middle of that, or maybe not quite in the middle. So that's um, fascinating to observe from, from my side. And it's a life experience that I knew at some point would probably come with this job. So I have to accept that. Um, I, I didn't ever get too carried away by what happened before. And um, I'm not too down about what's happening now. I, I want to put it right, of course. I want the team to win. I want the team to play well and I want the fans to be happy. That's why I took the job. I, I wanted to make a difference with English football. So that, that will never change and I'll keep working every hour I have to try and uh, improve what we're doing. Thanks, Rob. Alex Howe? Hi, Gareth. Uh, could I get a team news and fitness update and particularly on Jordan Henderson? Will he be available for tomorrow? Yeah, everybody uh, with this um, is fit. So, um, yeah, uh, no... no issues unless I go back and the medics tell me otherwise. Uh, the only player in the squad without a cap is Ivan Tony. He wasn't in the squad for the match against Italy. Uh, will, he be, will he be included tomorrow? Uh, we'll, we'll have a think about that. We'll have a meeting with the coaches later. Um, first and foremost, it's been great, I think, for him to be with us and to see how we work. Of course, everybody wants to get into the team and onto the pitch. Um, but you have a better chance of doing that well when you've been with the group longer and you're used to how we play and you feel more comfortable with the other players. So, um, you know, I think whatever happens tomorrow, this has been a useful exercise for him and for us. Um, I remember I, I was in the stand for the first two international camps. Uh, they were a little bit shorter, but um, that, that was the way Terry Venables um, embedded me into the group. Sometimes we've done it that way, sometimes we haven't. I understand the push because we're so close to a World Cup, but also there is life for Ivan Tony beyond the World Cup as well. And um, he's, um, you know, he's very much in the frame. And um, what he does with his club between now and then is also really important. So there's a chance he, he might not be, but it's also longer term thinking as well. Yeah, I think that's hopefully what I, I, I got across, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you take some comfort that it's not only England from uh, the bigger nations who aren't picking up results? Spain and Germany uh, losing and France have only won one game so far in the Nations well, League. Well, it, it gives perspective, um, but it's not, um, you know, it's not something that can is is my concern. You know, that's uh, my job is to get this team playing well and to get this team winning, and um, what everybody else is doing is irrelevant, really. And uh, to Raheem, do you think too much is being made about the lack of goals at the moment? Um, not really. Um, as I said, with the players that we we have in the in the team and been producing for many years, um, of course, it's it's not what we want at this moment in time. Of course not. Um, if we don't score goals, we, we don't get results. It's as simple as that. So, no. But I think it will it will come in good stead. We don't have to panic. I keep saying. Um, it's better for us to get out, out of the way now than in a tournament football. Um, so, as I said, we've got a big one tomorrow. Let's try and see if we can produce there and, and build from there. Thanks, Alex. Carrie Brown? Gareth, it's really interesting with the timing of going into this tournament. You've got players that are just starting the Premier League season, getting used to the systems that the managers want to introduce now, and you're going straight into a tournament. How much of this Nations League has been actually experiment, experimentation for you going into a World Cup and how much has it been about getting key results? Yeah, it's been a really 
complicated competition um, both the last two times because um, the previous one we took the players um, in the middle of their holiday um, we, we played in Iceland and we played away in Denmark and most of the guys had either had I think they'd just finished the rearranged European finals and had had one week off or they were in the middle of pre-season they hadn't had any football so that was also really strange and of course all be behind closed doors matches and camps with Covid restrictions um, and this one has been complicated in a different way for four matches at the end of the season uh, I've discussed all the ins and outs of that so no, no point in me going over that again um, so yes we have experimented we needed to see certain players in the summer in particular to uh, to be able to make better judgments on the squad and um, starting positions uh, and also in the knowledge that um, we could lose players in the lead-in. You know, it's a very congested program once we finish here um, with the league and the Champions League in particular. Um, so there is a high risk of, of injuries, I think, with, with that density of matches. One Prime Minister once said in the House of Commons that the toughest job in this country is actually the England manager's job. You've made it look relatively easy of late. I think your most testing times, you talked about the criticism of heavy rotations against Belgium in the World Cup qualifying group, uh, then of course deciding on your future after defeat in the European final, but we're talking about a route to the semi-final and, and, and ever World Cup and to the final. So in those tough moments, who did you go to, who did you draw on and what were the most important things as a coach that steadied you to get your team once again to climactic point? Yeah, I think you draw on your experience and you um, you draw on people that are that are close to you and um, uh, perhaps other coaches that have worked at, at the level as well. You know, you, you're conscious that I'm not the first coach to go through a difficult time and in terms of results and, and criticism, that, that is part of the territory. So um, for, for me, it's... Um, a great challenge to to lead the team through a moment like this. You know, you're not you're not going to have um, six years as we've had w without a spell where, <coughs> where you're going to have some tough results, and you've you've got to show the resilience to come through those moments. And Raheem, for you, um, we've seen how much the England team grows when you're actually away at a tournament, going into the World Cup. Uh, very few expectations on this team that grew into such a strong unit with your time away in Russia and then on the back of the Nations League as well going into the Euros a team that just got stronger in depth what is it that Gareth Southgate does away in a camp like that when he gets you for all that time and, and what does that tell you about any fears that England could be the new Italy and, and may not struggle to push on again into this World Cup? Oh, from the, the moment Gareth's come in I think I think massively that's shifted in the group is the mentality. Um, he's definitely changing the mentality of the of the group, and like anything, camps have been enjoyable. Uh, it doesn't feel like you're you're stuck somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Um, a lot of the boys are close, and as I keep saying, I keep going over it. It's, it's been a tough period now, but I don't think you know any of the boys uh, back over there on base now will be thinking you know that we don't have a good chance in in the in the winter. And um, that's the belief that we have as a group. Um, yes, of course. The results don't show that right now, but um, I'm, I'm still strongly uh, in belief with the boys there that when we go um, over there in the winter, that we'll, we'll have a good one, that's for sure. Don't write England off yet. Pardon? Don't write on England off. No, no, no. I, as I keep saying, there's no need, no need to panic. Yes, these results are bad, but we've got, we've got um, good things to come. Gareth shouldered a lot of the blame, or all of the blame, after, after that result. How much have you talked about in, that, in the dressing room and repaying that faith? Was there a bit of guilt, or do you just all know that you're working in the right direction and it will come? Yeah, and I think since the manager's come in, that's all he's done um, for us. You know, he's always tried to protect us. He's always made the, tried to make the environment um, really calm for us so we can go out there and do what we need to do on the football field. But, you know, of course... After the summer performances, you know, we all came away from that, um, and we had to have, have a look at, at ourselves. And you know, not, not, none of us were, were proud of the performance we put out. Me, myself, personally, um, and I don't think it's for Gareth to shoulder all that blame. You know, I think we've got players in there that's played at the highest level, and we need to take some of that responsibility as well and um, start to put these performances 
on the football field and, and win football matches because that's as simple what we're here for. Uh, we're not a country that comes to try and partake. We want to we want to win things, and um, as for us as a group, as I said, we we haven't just sat on it. We've been in there and we've we we spoke as a collective, and um, I think we're we're in the right stead to to make things right. Do you think there is a sense with this World Cup coming so quickly, it is catching us all out, even though we knew it was coming, that having taken on your your ideas at club, that there is a bit of a there's a lot it's a it's a lot of change, and that when you get embedded in the camp, it's going to be a different situation. Yeah, I think especially because it's mid-season um, that the World Cup comes now and it's not something that we're all used to. So, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a new thing for us. Um, but as I keep saying, for us as a national team and a country, I don't think it's one that we need to panic about. We have a, a fresh start when we when we do go to the World Cup. And I, and I know the boys um, have been in those scenarios before and I know that uh, we will come good. And the, the criticism around Gareth's tactics is too one-dimensional, that he's not attacking enough. What, what's your thoughts on that? I'll just say semi-final and a final and um, we should be trying to you know, put positive messages out there to, to try and you know, spur the boys on again. As I said, with the performances, I, I get it, that why we're thinking like this at the minute, but I, I keep saying I don't think it's time to panic. You know, He showed over the last couple of years what he brings um, to this team and um, he's someone that all the boys trust and someone that we all want to follow in his direction. And, and I don't think these last couple of games... Um, changes that narrative. I think the narrative needs to be that can we go that one step ahead and how are we going to do it and um, try and build a, a positive, um, yeah, positive. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Jack Whitbrook. Gareth, you talked a lot about wanting to accept the criticism from supporters over the last few games and wanting to protect the players from any negativity coming their way. But are you worried that if you get abused tomorrow night that it, some of that effect might filter through to the players and might affect them yeah I mean look I, I think we've got 90,000 people the uh, stadium sold out the people want to come and see this team play so and that's because the players have done an unbelievable job for six years um, we, we were on the back of a really difficult time in terms of relationship with the fans at, at the start of that journey and slowly we've built um, the, the finishes that have been discussed already in this room so um, of course um, it's not healthy for the team to be having this noise around them I, I, I fully understand that um, but it's for me to take the responsibility it's for me to allow them to go and play I want them to feel the freedom um, I think they know that we always talk about that in, within the uh, training ground and uh, on the training pitch um, and yeah I, I would urge the the supporters to get behind the team how, how they deal with me at the end or w whenever uh, on the phone-ins or whatever else is completely different but this is their last chance to see the boys before they go to a World Cup and um, we're all in it together we can only succeed if we're if we're all pushing in the same direction and we've all got that positive energy towards doing well what happens to me is is, is irrelevant frankly um, it's about the team. The most important thing is the team and the success of the team. Thanks, Joe. We've got two more. Uh, one here, and then we'll finish with Matt Reid at the back. Oh, three more. Okay. Hi, Gareth. <coughs> um, you've spoken about missing a midfield pivot who can progress the ball forward. How big a blow is it to the team having Calvin Phillips off injured? And at this stage, how likely is it that he will make it to the World Cup? Um, well, I think you only have to see the quality of his performances um, for us and with Leeds to see um, and the fact that he's now moved to, to a big club to see uh, his level. Um, he had a huge impact when he came into the, into the squad and a massive part of the run to a European final. So um, the honest answer to the injury is we don't know. Um, it's obviously going to be very tight because healing from that sort of operation is, is the first part and the second part is whether there can be enough football um, once he's healed to, uh, to being realistic consideration so we're, we're always optimistic you, you, when there's a target and somebody's really um, hungry to achieve it it's amazing what the body can, can do he had a dislocated shoulder in the last game of the season before the Euros so um, that was a, a quite remarkable recovery in itself. 
we're, we're just going to have to wait and see. And, and I know, obviously, from his point of view, um, he's um, he's disappointed to miss this camp, but he's he's fully focused on getting back for his club and then hopefully for us. Thanks. You want to have visitors from Germany now? And then we'll finish my radio. So matches, uh, it's Elke Büchter, I'm working for RTL Germany. Matches against Germany are always very emotional. Um, the German team is heavily criticized too. Uh, will you focus on uh, one special player? Do you, say, uh, do you say one is the most dangerous or is it the techniques? Or do you say, okay, after Hungary, uh, we see where we can and how we can beat the Germans? Well, I think they have lots of very good players. Um, I think Joshua Kimmich is fundamental to the team and the way they play. Um, he uh, organises the game for them and he reads the game so well. Um, but they have a lot of World Cup winners, a lot of Champions League winners. So we know any game with Germany, they have that mentality and belief. And we've got to show that. You know, We've got to show that um, we have that same uh, belief in ourselves. We don't have the same history to give us that belief, but we have the recent history in terms of this team and what they've achieved. And um, that, that's one of the big factors, I think, when you play Germany in any game. Thank you. We'll finish with one from Matt Reid. Uh, Raheem, comment pieces were written across Europe and across the world this year um, when you moved from from Manchester City to Chelsea and they were surprised that Manchester City would, would let a player of your quality go. You are so highly regarded across the planet. How confident are you that you can be a world star, underline that point, and be a star of this World Cup? And looking across the squad, how many players are there in the England squad and in the England team who can, be, who can really you know, nail their colours to the mass and underline the fact that they are capable of winning big games and you know, being world stars? Um, I don't think it's really about being a world star. I think... The, the most important thing is that collective um, performances out there. And of course, you're going to need individuals to win your football matches. But I don't think to myself, I want to go here and, and, and try to show myself um, to be a star. No, it's first and foremost, the team needs to go and perform. Because if the team don't perform, then I can't be in positions or um, have moments to, to win games for my, my, my team. So I'd say the answer to that question is, is definitely... I think we have definitely got players of that calibre that can win you football matches at any moment in time but um, I think what's so good about us is the collective and, and that's how it's always been and, and that's how we, we, we'll keep going. And just quickly Gareth, there, there were some issues in the speed of transition uh, in, the, uh, in the game against, against Italy. How important is speeding up the transition from your full backs to your midfield and to your attacking players? Yeah, we, we've highlighted that in, in the meeting since the game. Um, Defences are so well organised. I mean, Italy were, were very strong defensively and there was very little space for our forwards. So those turnovers and those transitions were very, very important. And on the night, we didn't exploit them as well as we need to. So it's definitely an area of the game that we've talked about. Um, you don't have a lot of time on the training pitch following a match like that before tomorrow to, to work on those things. But it's an area we've highlighted and that we had worked on the, in the week leading into the first game. Okay, everybody, we'll end it there. Thanks for your time today. Thank you.